Hey, what's up? Camero here, and this is part 4 of my How to Make a Pokemon game tutorial series. In this episode, what we're going to be looking at is how to add wild Pokemon to your route, how to add legendary Pokemon to your game, as well as how to edit the map metadata. So let's get started. What I've done, as you can probably see already, is I've, mon I've modified Route 1 a little bit to make it more of a standard Pokemon route. I also edited the town a little bit, make it look a little bit less, a little bit less garbage. But um, one thing that I've done, as you can see, is added grass. And for our route and adding wild Pokemon, that's super important. And one thing that's super cool is it's super easy to add wild Pokemon. You don't have to make events, you don't have to edit much. You just have to place some grass on the map. That's step one, and it's super easy to do. Step two, I'm going to show you. And step two to adding wild Pokemon to your game is you just have to launch your game. And look, I can walk around now. Press F9 to go into debug mode. And you can hold down to go there. I like to use up to go to the bottom of the menu. But um, basically, go navigate to set encounters. Select set encounters, and then for your route one, and this is where you can start modifying which wild Pokemon are on your route. You can set the density, and there are three density values. There's land, which is normal tall grass, so I do 25, that's the default, so it's just normal. And then there's cave density, and cave, cave is basically if the tile set is cave and you're walking around inside of a cave, rather than walking through grass, it'll just check and have wild Pokemon appear on the ground always, you know, like a standard Pokemon cave. And the third type, is on water, so when you're surfing. So I do 10 for that also. So those are the default densities, 25, 10, and 10. Land, cave, and water. And then you can make an encounter type. So go down to new encounter type and hit enter. So you can select land, you can select cave, water, rock smash, old rod, good rod. See, this is all stuff that you know. I would say don't, don't worry about messing with land morning and land day and land night, unless you want to make a Pokemon game that keeps track of day and night cycles and make it so that way the route has different Pokemon if it's daytime versus nighttime. That's a little more complex, but, you know, hey, this is how you do it. There's also bug contest. That's a little more complex, but, you know, we're going to keep it basic here. This is a basic tutorial, so I'm going to go land. So um, now you're presented with this. The Pokemon on the top are the highest percentage chance, the most common, and the Pokemon on the bottom are the lowest. So 20% chance we run into a Bulbasaur, and then 20% Bulbasaur, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 5, 5, 4, 4, 1, 1. Okay, so here's something really cool. Now that I've done this, I can just hit escape. And what this has done is his, it has modified a text document that is outside of the game. So let me close the game and let me go into our game folder and go into the PBS folder. That's where all the text documents are. And let's find it. It is encounters. Okay, cool. So, so um, we actually made a mistake here. The Route 1 has already been set um, in the uh, previous, like in the Pokemon Essentials that we downloaded, Route 1's already been set. What we can do is just Control-A, Delete, Save, and then what we can do is run the editor again real quick. And then what this will do is, as you'll see, it will populate the text file. So right now the text file is empty. I deleted everything, I hit Save, it's all empty, but if I go into Encounters again, like we just did, which will be super fast. Da -da, set encounters, route one, density, enter, 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 new encounter type, land. There we go. That was that fast. It took like less than a minute. But I close it, and now it'll say, hey, it's been modified. Do you want to reopen it? Yes, cool. So now we have our route one. Check it out. We got route one, 25, 10, 10, the values we set, land, and Bulbasaur, five. Okay, so basically this will make it so you run into Bulbasaurs that are level five. But let's say we want to have a little bit of variance. Like, what if we want to run into Bulbasaur's level 2 through 6? Well, it's super easy, actually. What you can do is change this first value from 5 to 2, so you want that to be the lowest value, and then just do another comma and then 6. So basically what this means is the Pokemon you want to run into, comma, the lowest, value, the lowest level, comma, the highest level. And these all need to be, all the Pokemon names need to be all caps. But basically, let's run into some Shroomishes, or let's run into some Caterpies. Let's run into some Pikachu, and then let's run into some Pidgey, I don't know, friggin' Spiro, and I don't know, Squirtle, <laughs> whatever. So yeah, you just put all the Pokemon you want to run into in here, and you can set them to be 
the ones up top are the more the most common. The ones on the bottom are the least common. So let's let's make Pikachu's range like I don't know two to five, whatever. You get the, you get the idea. So basically, you, this is what you do to modify wild Pokemon on your route. So now, after this text document's been modified, we can hit play. And since in our game we don't have any Pokemon yet, we haven't done any events to give ourselves Pokemon, there's something super easy that you can do, and that's um, just use debug mode to give yourself a demo party. So let's see. What you want to do is just go down. Where is it? So there's an add Pokemon debug, and that's super super useful, but I just like to use give demo party. What this will do is give yourself a team of level 20s that have all the different like HMs and moves and stuff. But now as we walk around the grass... Oh, it takes a while to load. See, that's one of the downsides. Um, if you're not using custom battle music, the music can take a while to load. But, you know, our random battle worked. We ran into our Bulbasaur. Let's run away. And let's trigger one more grass battle. It shouldn't be, like, we set some other Pokemon that were pretty high. There we go, there's a Shroomish, cool. So it's all working as intended. Very nice. Very, very nice. But let's let's talk about some of the other things I said I was going to talk about. I said I was going to talk about map metadata and some legendaries. Let's do a legendary. Legendaries are actually super easy. Like, they're actually insanely easy. It's an event, but it's super easy to do. If you want to make it more complex, you can, and I'll, I'll go into events later that that way you can make it more complex. But basically, you just need to go into your intro and find, like, Birth Island or Faraday Island. I do I do the Birth Island one. And look at this event. So this is a Deoxys event that they already made. And basically what it means is you talk to him, it plays Deoxys's cry, it waits, it changes a switch, which I'll com I'll cover later, don't worry about this. This is this is some stuff. And then it, it, does, it sends you into a battle with Deoxys, and then it does Control Switch A on, and turns it off. So... This is this is might be a little confusing for people who aren't into the event system and stuff, and I'll cover all this in the future. But essentially what you want to do is you just copy this guy. Blah blah blah. You just paste him here, blah blah blah. So now we just got a Deoxys in, on our route. But let's edit it a little bit. What we want to do is you see this thing that says script PB Wild Battle Deoxys? What you can do is just go in and change the name from Deoxys to let's say Groudon. And instead of level 30, let's make him level 80, whatever. Cool. Okay. And then, apply. So now, when you interact with this guy, it'll be a Groudon at level 80. So let's play it out. And you can change the art, you can change the graphic for all of this. But right now, there's our Deoxys that we placed. You talk to him. It takes a little bit to load, because, once again, we're not using good music. The music that comes with Pokemon Essentials by default takes, like, forever to load. I don't know why. It sucks. So I recommend, like, importing your own music and figuring that out for battles. But hey, you know, we'll look at that in this episode. So here we found our Legendary. It's cool. And actually, I do have custom Groudon art that I imported myself. I'll go more into um, art stuff later, but um, check it out. So if I really wanted to make this look like a real Groudon... Bo, there he is. He's on our route. He's a big giant dude, just chilling. I'm just gonna keep this Groudon chilling on this route for a bit. He's just gonna be there. Okay, cool. So, that music took forever to load. I didn't like it. It was it was lame. So, what we can do is, there's two ways that we can do this. I'll show you. I'll show you the the hard way first, and then I'll show you the easy way second. So, let's do F9, and do map metadata. Map metadata is awesome because it allows you to set a lot of important values for your map. So, for example, on Route 1, Outdoor Area, yes. What this will, I think what this will do is make it check for Daytime and Nighttime. There's a script that you can do to turn Daytime and Nighttime off. I think I'll look at this that in this episode as well. Okay, so Show Area, that means if you walk on this map, it'll display the map name in the top. So when you enter Route 1, it'll say Route 1. So you want to turn that on. Bicycle, that means you can bike here. Bicycle Always, that means you're forced to bike here, like the bike route in uh, Red and Blue. Don't want that. Healing Spot. That's um, basically the location of the Pokemon Center. If you have a Pokemon Center on your map, you want to use this. And then you want to navigate to your map, and then you want to click where the Pokemon Center is. But there is no Pokemon Center on this map, so I I'll have to delete that later. Anyway, weather. You can change it to be rainy, stormy, sunny, all that good stuff. Map position. That is used when you want to edit the mini-map. I mean, not the mini-map, the uh, town map. I'll talk about that in a future episode. But this, this is useful as well. Map position. Dive map, dark map. 
Dive map don't really worry about too much unless you want to do underwater stuff. I'll cover that later. Dark map is if you're making a cave and you want a black circle to be around your character. And then flash can expand that circle so you can see more. Safari map, see like these are more complicated stuff. Dungeon, don't worry about that. But battle back, actually no. Battle back is something that's automatically handled for the most part by um, RPG Maker. Don't worry about this. Um, wild battle BGM, trainer battle BGM, wild victory, and trainer victory. See, these are things where you can set your own battle music. So on this map, a wild Pokemon battle, instead of playing Battle 02, let's make it play something that we've imported ourselves. Let's see, I haven't imported any good battle music, have I? Hmm, there's no good battle music that I've imported, but let's import this. I mean, let's just use this, GSC battle. And wild victory, let's make that victory wild. Okay. So, look, see, and now it's nighttime because I'm recording this at nighttime, and I set the value to be outside. Um, I'll. See, look, now, now the music is playing the music that we've selected. Sweet. So, I'll, you can see that the map metadata effects take place, like, instantly, which is pretty, pretty sweet. Okay, cool. Hey, so I didn't explain what the easy way was to change the uh, custom music on your map. So, if you go into your PBS folder, there's actually a text document, let's find it, called Metadata. And this determines a lot of the overall metadata for your game. And what you can do is you can actually set a lot of the default music here. So instead of the default trainer battle background music being this like 005 boss.mid or whatever, that's the crap that comes with RPG Maker. That's bad. It takes forever to load. I actually imported some music that will be a lot easier. Let's see if I can find it. That's the wrong folder. Let me just find it real quick. Okay, so in our audio BGM, I imported Wild Battle and Wild Victory, and then I think I also did Trainer Battle, Trainer Victory. Cool. So this is Trainer Battle that MP3, Trainer Victory that MP3, Wild Battle that MP3, Wild Victory that MP3. Easy stuff. So let's see here. In this text document, our default Trainer Battle will just be Trainer battle.mp3 our default wild battle will be wild battle.mp3 cool so I can change like surf and bicycle and other stuff as well but let's play it and I'll show you it makes a huge difference in terms of load time it's actually a big deal I didn't change the victory music yet but just the wild battle music itself is in and check this out like okay so load time wise it's no contest but you have to be certain that the map metadata is set as well to be proper so it's still playing the one that takes forever to load this one takes forever to load um, what I need to do is let's see wild battle I'll just set it to this wild battle to mp3 that's the one that takes no time at all to load cool so now if I go into a battle you'll see the load time is way faster Look, it plays the music like instantly. That's amazing. Okay, so if you want to just set one that determines like everything, I highly recommend that you go and you just set the default audio to be something that's, you know, smaller in size and loads faster. But yeah, here is where you can set the default trainer battle music and the default wild battle music. I hope that helped, and I'll return back to the tutorial now. But. One thing I... Let's let's say we don't want our game to have a day and night cycle. It's a super quick fix to turn it off, and I'll show you right now. This button right here will take you to scripts, and it can be a huge overload of information at first. You can see all this stuff and be like, holy crap, whoa, there's so much going on. But check this out. If you just scroll down a little bit, there's a thing here. It's only a little bit down. Just scroll down a little bit. This thing says enable shading. It's equal to true right now, but instead of true, just type in false hit apply okay cool and this means the day night cycle won't affect your game so now when we load in it should be daytime on route one so let's let it process taking its time yes yeah, sure. cool all right and now it is daytime on our route we walk into a wild pokemon oh no it's loading oh no see this sound effect takes a while to load too okay i'm gonna have to import battle music that loads faster but look, the background and the grass and everything, it's all handled. So you don't have to worry about setting a battle back or anything when it comes to wild Pokemon and all this. So cool. That's totally set. So look at that. We added wild Pokemon to our route. We 
Um, added a legendary Pokemon to Route, and now we got this giant Groudon standing here. That's kind of scary. Um, we also looked at the map metadata a little bit. Um, there's there's definitely a lot more stuff that can be looked into, but this is a lot of the basic stuff that you'll need. But yeah, hopefully this episode was super helpful. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, leave a comment. Um, hit me up on Twitter, and I also have a Twitch um, where I'm streaming myself working on a Pokemon game. I'm working on a Pokemon game called Pokemon Duality right now on Twitch. It's pretty cool, so uh, if you ever want to go there and ask me any questions live, I am more than happy to help you with anything you need. So once again, thanks for watching, and I hope that this episode was helpful, and I hope to see you next time. See you guys.